We're gonna make my soft sourdough master recipe. If your family complains that sourdough is too chewy, too holy, too sour, not fluffy enough, this recipe's for you. Our current favorite go-to is just making it into buns. Something about buns, my kids are so much like more likely to just whip themselves up a peanut butter jam sandwich or something. When we have the buns, it feels like so easy to be like, hey, let's just make some bear salami, homemade cheese, bun. Let's go to the river for dinner. Feels so much more approachable. So we kind of just constantly are making batches of buns. The neat thing about this recipe is that you have the master dough and then you can make that into anything. Buns, loaves, cinnamon buns, French bread. No, it's not authentic French bread, but it's delicious. You can make like calzones with it. You can make pizza with it. You can make cheese buns with it. It's just a super versatile dough that's so soft. Now it's got a little different method than my other sourdough recipes. Um, and it is measured in cups, not grams. We start with what's called a pre-ferment or a levain. This is basically like making a big old batch of starter. You take your sourdough starter and you feed it an intentional measured amount. So I did that last night with some starter that was happy, but it was actually starting to sink. It doesn't need to be at, when I'm making my pre-ferment, my starter doesn't need to be at optimal happy bread baking level because it's gonna get fed again in the pre-ferment. So I made for a triple batch of soft sourdough master recipe. So we have this and it's all lovely. So just like your starter, you want your levain to, your pre-ferment, your levain, whatever you wanna call it, <laughs> to have doubled and be bubbly and look amazing. It's not going to smell as sour as a sourdough starter. It's going to smell a little more mild, which is nice. While this recipe is written as a single batch, I never make a single batch. So I've got three tablespoons of melted butter. And now we're going to add about three tablespoons of my marvelous honey from my bees. We need a little bit more there. Now the lovely thing about this recipe is that in the end we're going by feel. So exact, exact measurements don't matter. Now Turn the heat back on. We want this to be just warm, not hot. We don't need to kill the yeast. I'm gonna tell you a little secret too. I'm gonna add this as a recipe note, but if you're swimming in eggs, you can sub some of the milk for eggs and it's gonna add a really nice boost to your dough it's a simple swap. You take out a quarter cup of milk, so each recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of milk. So take out a quarter cup of milk and add a regular to large size egg. So what I'm actually doing is I have um, some pullet and bantam eggs, so they're small eggs. So these I'm counting as two eggs, not four eggs, because they're really only about two eggs worth. And um, something that people put in bread sometimes to make it extra fluffy is something called lecithin and they use a supplement for that but eggs naturally have lecithin how amazing then there's that extra fat from the yolks um, and fat always adds good richness so adding an egg or two really is a simple way to boost your dough and if you're swimming in eggs like we are i'm happy to add eggs to my dough the main difference from this one to my other sourdough recipes is my other sourdough recipes you can mix by hand. This one really does better off with a mixer. 
So that maybe ended up warmer than I would have liked. Let's feel it. I can still hold my hand in comfortably. Mm, actually, yeah, maybe I made it a bit too warm. Let's give it a minute, it'll cool down fast. It really only needed a minute. So, got our lovely pre-ferment. So the point where I add the eggs is I'm gonna mix this and then I'm gonna add the eggs. I'm just gonna mix this for just a minute. Have a little egg trick for those of you who have barnyard eggs that maybe you don't wash before you use or whatever or you have your used first ones so rarely is there actually a bad egg but what i do is this is the lid to my bosch so i just crack the eggs one at a time into this lid part this is also nice if kids are helping oh see i dropped a shell right there because then if they dump a bunch of shell, they're not doing it into the dough. We can just do one at a time. Also, that yolk color, woohoo! There we go. So, we measure out there's, I think it's like two and something cups per batch. I know about how many cups my scoop is, so I just know that I need about a scoop per batch. So I'm gonna start on the low side. So with this dough, we're going to mix it just until, see it's cleaning the sides, the sides are clean. And now we're going to let it sit for about 20 minutes. And this is going to help the gluten structure develop. Now, if you're making this before bed with the overnight modification, you're going to do two things differently. Number one. You're gonna skip this rest. You're just gonna need it because time, it's gonna have more time to develop gluten. Whereas when I'm making it in a day, I need to go on a faster time frame and letting it sit for a few minutes feels counterintuitive, but it actually will speed up the process in the end. The other thing you're gonna do is we're going to, after this needs, it's gonna rise, we're gonna punch it down, it's gonna rise again, then we're gonna punch it down and shape it. Yes, two bulk rises. If you're doing this overnight, you're gonna only do one bulk rise. You're gonna let it rise overnight. You're gonna punch it down. You're gonna shape it. It doesn't need the second rise if you're doing it overnight. So those are some little tweaks and modifications that, um, that work. I got busy working on things and forgot about this for half an hour, so. I meant to do it earlier, but it's fine. The dough looks really visibly no different. The main difference is if you do this, you can see it's already forming gluten structure. It would have just broken apart if you'd done that sooner. So now we're gonna turn it on to knead for about five minutes in a Bosch, 10 minutes in a KitchenAid. A Bosch is more efficient. You can knead this by hand. You're just gonna get an awesome arm workout. The dough looks a lot more uniform now. It doesn't, like it's tacky, but it doesn't stick to my fingers when I do this. This is perfect. This is, I think, I think we'll be able to fit in here. Sometimes it's borderline too much dough to rise in this bowl. 
I actually broke the lid one time. This is a two-handed job. Kate, what are you doing? So, we're going to go for it. It's going to fill this bowl, but we'll just kind of even it out. There we go. Let's leave for a couple hours. So, I had to go check a friend's cow that calved, and my dough is growing out of the bowl. But that's okay. That's okay. Let's see. Just flour on the counter. Oh, I probably should have an apron on. There's no aprons in the kitchen. Okay, we're gonna do this. If your dough is just perfect, it's just gonna nicely come out of here. show you the versatility of this. I'm gonna make one loaf and then I'm gonna make a tray of buns. So, this loaf, I always shape my loaves like this. There's a BB playing on the floor, you can hear him. So I first just roll it up like that and then we're gonna let it rest. Then, buns. A lot of you know this bun shaping trip, but a trick, but in case you don't, I'm gonna show you. This is my mother-in-law taught me this. So you take, you want an unfloured counter and you want dough that is not like dusty floury. You, it needs to be a little sticky. So you take it and you put your hands like this and you go in a circle and you have a perfectly shaped bun. And you get real good. Two at once. It's an arm workout. It's a brain workout. It's a full body workout. Way faster. Your buns get a nice tight top. I used to shape buns like this. Every bun, I would do this. This, way faster. That one's not the right size there. there we go. For buns, I love to use a silk hat. I do four buns along. They're gonna kind of touch each other, but I kind of, I like that. Also, as you can tell, my buns are not perfectly the same size. Oh, I forgot one. Nor did I cut them into any, I got one extra. Oh, let's go like this. Perfect. A loaf. So remember we did this, the seam side goes down. We're gonna do it this way. We're going to press it out so it's roughly the size of both our hands. We're gonna fold it like a triangle. Then we're gonna fold it inwards. This makes a nice tight top. 
And then we just kind of tuck in the loose ends, flip it over. It's a little catawampus. The other thing we can do too is drag it towards us. There we go. Now, that needs something to go in. I get my loaf pans at the thrift store and I line them the cart because then I don't have to wash them, then I don't have to grease them, they don't stick. This parchment's a little big. Um, so I like to put it on the parchment and then put it in like a sling. My favorite thing to do here, this is a big bag, it's like a turkey roaster bag. So I, I reuse these bags a lot of times, then I don't get uh, tea towel dirty or anything, and I'm going to tuck the loaf in there too, I think. See if we can make this work. Yeah, there we go. So now, this is going to sit. I'm gonna put away some groceries because my Suburban is full of groceries. I guess it's a Yukon. We got a new vehicle, like new to us. So Chevy makes a Suburban, GMC makes a Yukon XL. So I'm still gonna call it a Suburban. I'm gonna go and look my groceries. Okay, this has been hanging out hour and a half, two hours here. Not quite doubled, but I aim for sourdough to just be more like one and a half at least. And with the buns, I know that once they start touching each other, they are happy, happy, happy. I don't use anything fancy, I just use a bread knife. I'm gonna do it three nice deep slashes. So they're like, they're the width of the knife blade here. They're a nice inch thick. Now all these are gonna go in the oven. Whoops.